Hi, this is Marketa Huskova, your executive director. I am here with Roxanne Gould, our lobbyist, and we would like to give you our first legislative update of this session. So Roxanne, why don't you tell us a little bit of the lay of the land? Where are we in the legislative session and how many bills do we have? So thanks, Marketa. We're um, in the first year of a two year session. Uh, we have about, well, not even about, we have uh, almost 2,700 mm -hmm. bills that have been introduced. The bill introduction deadline just passed. They're starting to be assigned to committee, and we're you know, reviewing them, going through each bill, and each bill as it's amended, and we'll be um, working with ANAC membership and legislative committee to identify priority legislation, which we'll keep you updated on as it moves through the process. Um, we have a new governor. We have a uh, supermajority of Democrats in the legislature, which means that there is more than two-thirds of each house occupied by Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, Why so is it important? Why is supermajority important? Well, it's very important because in order to pass a bill, you typically need a majority of the vote. So out of the 80 assembly members, 41 people have to vote for it. A supermajority impacts situations where you pass a tax ah, or, or change the Constitution. You mm -hmm. have to have two-thirds of the vote or more. And so with a supermajority, it means Republicans have no way of in and of themselves stopping influencing a bill, something. influencing mm -hmm. a bill. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have every constitutional office is occupied by Democrats. Um, we have high priority issues across the board. The 2,700 are very, very, uh, they impact anything you could possibly mm -hmm. imagine. But mm -hmm. obviously there's a great focus on health care. There's a great focus right. on the wildfires and disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. um, both of those obviously are of great interest to us and we'll be updating you as they proceed. Um, what I'd like to do is see if uh, Marquetta can talk about a few of the priority bills that we've identified to date. So why don't you start with um, a AB 890. AB 890. So AB 890, you know, you've all heard about it, that Assemblyman Jim Wood, he is the chair of uh, Assembly Health Committee, he authored a bill asking for full practice authority for nurse practitioners. Um, I don't know if you're aware that uh, Chairman Wood was a part or is part of the Commission on Future of uh, Healthcare Workforce in California. Uh, the Commission uh, which was chaired by Janet Napolitano. Uh, the commission issued a 27 recommendation briefing and all those recommendations uh, deal with access to primary care. Now, the briefing uh, clearly states uh, the role of nurse practitioner in primary care and in access to care, especially in the underrepresented and under is the under I'm saying underserved underserved thank you underserved areas especially rural areas so nurse practitioners are to play a huge role so we are very pleased that the chairman would um, sponsor this bill um, uh, for those of you who are uh, registered to come to r and uh, we are looking to uh, host and invite um, chairman Wood to our lobby day that he would talk about the bill and then you know he would have a little bit of opportunity to answer your questions what else do we have? Well, um, and first of all, Assemblyman Wood has been a loyal attendee yeah, to our RN day. So we're really great. He was there last year? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So another bill is AB 329 by Assemblyman Rodriguez. Ah, what do you think yeah. of that one? AB 329, many of you remember that in 2014, Assemblyman Rodriguez already uh, uh, authored a bill increasing the level of uh, punishment or level of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Penalty? Penalty, thank you. See, that's why we're a good team. <laughs> uh, increasing level of penalty for uh, healthcare professionals who get assaulted inside ER. I don't know if you know, if you get assaulted outside of ER, uh, the perpetrator gets the full penalty of law. When the same assault happens inside ER, there are the penalties are much lower. So in 2014, this bill passed both houses and went to Governor Brown, who vetoed it back then, stating that he doesn't believe that increased punishment would change the behavior. Well, now we have a new governor, so Assemblyman Rodriguez is sponsoring and authoring the same bill. So we are back to um, assault and battery in ER, that the perpetrators would get the same punishment and the same penalty inside attacking somebody inside mm -hmm. ER or outside ER. So that's AB 329. 
It's also oh, important yes. to note that as Marquetta and I are meeting with members of the legislature, particularly the new ones, first of all, they all have an awesome story about nurses. Whether yeah, everybody loves a nurse. Yep, someone who took care of a family member, someone who is a nurse. Yeah. But when we brought this issue up, not even knowing that the Assemblyman was going to be introducing this bill, they were all stunned that it would be a different yeah. level of punishment. And so it, it might meet a different fate, and you obviously have a mm -hmm. new governor. So mm -hmm. we're hopeful that this will pass. Agree, and you know that we've been sharing a lot of articles uh, with you, with the legislative committee, uh, what a high priority healthcare is for Governor Newsom. So you know that now we have a new Surgeon General. So you know Roxanne is trying to reach out to her, and uh, we're trying to get a meeting so we can introduce her to ANAC and to the expertise our members offer. So healthcare is really number one on his agenda. So uh, maybe some of the bills will really. Uh, uh, both differently this this time about and mm -hmm. you will have new laws. So what else do we have? So let's go through the a few more really quickly so we don't take too much of your video time. But how about AB fourteen ninety? Ah, AB fourteen ninety. It's Assemblywoman Carrillo, and uh, this is very interesting bill because it is allowing medical assistants to be drawing local anesthetics. Now we reached out to uh, California Association of Nurse Anesthetists to see how they feel about that uh, because we obviously know what our nursing practice act states so we just wanted to reach out to them and see what we think so this is just something interesting for you to to know that we are working on next one is maybe 1544 1544 community paramedic paramedicine uh, program is back and so it's assemblyman Gibson and um, yet again you know that it was already introduced last year um, this year it's not only introducing community paramedicine but it's also including uh, setting up regulation that means regulation for standard practice, that means education, that means certification. So there is minimum standard of practice. So maybe that way our ERs would not be that, um, that uh, what do I want to say? Packed. Packed. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that packed. So, so that's AB 1544. Then we have one, uh, the very last one is SB 227, which is again repeat from Senator Leva from last year, that is um, uh, giving out penalties to hospitals and SNFs for not keeping up with the uh, mandated staffing ratios, which then puts nurses at the bedside at uh, very precarious conditions and unsafe working conditions mm -hmm. for the nurse or for the patients. So that's SB 227. So those are so far the most important bills uh, we found for you. Uh, we are monitoring and reading uh, dozens and dozens of others. So we will absolutely keep you updated. And uh, there are many, uh, many spot bills. Can you quickly tell us what is a spot bill? So, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, there was a bill introduction deadline. So there are various deadlines. And so a member of the legislature has an idea, but they aren't exactly sure what mm -hmm. they want to do. They will... Uh, amend a statute in a way that really doesn't do anything, could change an end to a the or a you know, but to a uh, also or... Could it change recommended to mandatory or the other way, something mandatory to recommend it? And that would probably so end up not being a spot okay. bill necessarily, okay. but so a spot bill basically small. is something that doesn't do much, okay. but it's meeting the legislative deadline so you have a place saver, you have a bill in that is valid and can mm -hmm. move forward because it met the deadlines. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, but it can be really amended, so we actually don't know how it's going to happen, right? So right. that's why we need to be watching them very closely.